Hello everybody and welcome to technology lab. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to install Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 on your machine. So for the installation of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux you need a Red Hat Enterprise Linux DVD for the installation and the first step what you need to do is you need to insert the DVD into your CD DVD tray and then you need to reboot the system. So once you reboot the system, your system will boot the operating system from the disk and you'll get this screen, the installation screen which you are seeing here. So just what you need to do is, you need to click on this install or upgrade option install or upgrade an existing system. So just go to install or upgrade and click on this. So once all your files are loaded, it will ask you to begin the media test. You can click on OK to check the installation disk for any error. Uh, for now, I'll skip this step and you just need to click on the arrow keys on your keyboard to select the options and click on enter to skip this. So your installation window will appear. Just click next. Select your language and click next. Select your keyboard layout by default it's US English. Leave this as it is and click next. In this installation I will be showing you a basic installation of a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 server. I will not be showing you any RAID configurations or your any other advanced configuration related things. This is a basic simple installation. This will give you a brief overview on how to install your Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. This video is basically for the beginners in the Red Hat administration. So uh, by watching this video you can get a brief over overview of how to install Red Hat. Then when you start learning different advanced stuff you can again uh, install the Red Hat from beginning and play with the advanced option but at present I'll be showing you the basic installation so just select the basic storage devices and click next click on yes discard any data write down your fully qualified host name you can leave this as it is or if you want, you can also give a domain name to your computer. I'll leave these changes as it is and click next. Select the time zone of your country and then leave these changes as it is and click next. Assign a root password. Give a root password and click on next. If you have given any weak password, it will give you a warning. You can change it. You can change the password by clicking cancel or you can use that password. Click on use anyway. And these are your partitioning options. So you can use different type of options. The first is use all space. It will remove all your partitions created by previous operating system and it will create your Linux partitions automatically. If you are having any Linux partitions on your system previously, you can select this option, it will replace all the existing Linux systems and it will install your Red Hat automatically. You can also use the free space option, you can also shrink current system. You can, you, if you use the free space option, it will automatically take up the free space from your hard disk and it will create the partition by itself. But I will show you how to create a custom layout, the basic how to create custom layout using the basic partitioning, partitioning system. So just select this and click next
So this is my hard disk of 8 GB. This actually this is a virtual box installation. So I've given an 8 GB of the hard disk space to the virtual box. I am installing Red Hat on a virtual box, but don't be afraid. You can refer this video to install on your system only directly on your system. So you might have a hard disk space of greater than 8 GB. Your 150, 180 GB or your 250 GB, 300 GB, whatever you want. You can do the partitioning. Just follow these steps for the basic installation. Click on this free and in the bottom click create and select the standard partition and click create. So first in the file system you need to select swap space and the size of the swap should be two times the size of your RAM. So I'm having a RAM of 1 GB so I'll give a space of 2048 which is equivalent to 2 GB. So if you are having a RAM of 2 GB you can give it 4 GB. That is the rule for giving the size of the swap space. So my I am having a 1 GB RAM so I am giving a 2 GB swap space. Click on OK. Second is you need to create another partition. That is the standard partition also. And in the file system leave the ext4 as it is which is the latest file system for the linux and here you need to select the boot give 100 mb to boot partition it will store all your configuration files related to booting the system and again create a part standard partition and this time will give mount point as slash which is your boot partition and I'll allocate 5 GB roughly 5 GB for this and the remaining again I'll create a new partition and I'll give it a slash home your home directory it's 1043 you can leave the home partition and directly create an root partition which wherein you can allocate all the space to the root partition and it will be a single partition but if you want different partitions you can create a different different home partitions after creating all the partitions just click next and click on format if you are not sure regarding the partitioning setup you can go back and do the changes or else you can click write changes to disk to apply the changes so now it's creating the file system on the partitions which we have created So these are the configuration for the bootloader. If you are installing Red Hat side by side your Windows system, you can see a Windows option here. If you are having a Windows installation previously and you are installing Red Hat alongside Windows, so you can see a Windows option. So you can also do the changes of the bootloader by after installation from the slash boot folder and this is the master boot record where you will be going to install the boot load and that is the slash dev slash fda so leave this as it is and click next now you are having different installation types the first is the basic server a database server a web server but if you are new to the world of linux uh, I'll recommend you select the desktop version because the basic server and the ser all the server installations you will not find a graphical user interface. It will be only a command line interface and it will be a little bit messy if you are beginning Red Hat administration. 
because you will not find any kind of a graphical user interface. So if you are beginning the RHEL administration, I recommend that you should use the desktop installation instead of going for the any different servers. These are the advanced options. Uh, I recommend that you leave these options for now and you can come back and install the Red Hat with these options when, once you are into Red Hat administration. So I'll leave this all the changes as it is and I'll click next. So your Red Hat Enterprise Linux has started the installation. So let's wait till all the packages are copied and completed. It will take near about uh, 15 to 20 minutes to complete the installation. So let's wait till the process is completed. So we have almost finished with the installation. There are few steps remaining which will be done after the system reboots. So once you are done with the installation, just reboot the screen by pressing this button below. Reboot. And we'll wait till the system reboots. Just click forward here, accept the license terms and conditions and press forward. Press forward once again, type in the username, type in your password and click forward. Press yes, adjust the time and the date and press forward. Ignore this error, ignore this warning and click on OK and click on finish. Now here you can log in for the first time, so I'll log in it from the root user. Type in the username and the password you have given for the root. And your Red Hat will start for the first time. So here you go. Your Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 has been successfully installed. So in this way you install Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. Follow the step by step all the steps shown in this video tutorial for the successful installation. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. And don't forget to subscribe my channel for the latest tips and tutorials on Linux, Oracle, Android and Windows. Once again, thanks for watching.